All right, Springer Channel One, how you doing? Welcome, friends, coast to coast and worldwide. You're live on the air with Pastor Rick. Good evening, Spreaker Channel One. How y'all doing? Hey, I'm getting ready to go live here tonight. Let's grab that thunder. The church. Amen. <clears throat> All right. I got a lot to cover uh, tonight, friends. Uh, trying to get some of this stuff uh, taken care of here. Let's grab our channels, make sure they're all dialed in. And again, we're going live on StreamYard, friends, with YouTube, Twitch TV, and more. So let's dial up that intro, uh, friends, uh, church, brothers and sisters. Amen. I think we've got, got everything tuned in. Now my stand broke uh, for my tablet. Uh, as you guys know, it was uh, on the right side of the uh, studio here. But uh, I reset that. It's on the left, and uh, I'm recording now. I do got one coming. I did order one, and I should have that one rolling through here all in the next week or two. So once I get that set, then I'll have, not have to worry too much about everything. So anyway, I think we're ready to dial in, friends. Let's get to it. Let's get our intro going here. And then we will get started. Amen, friends. All right. Make sure the volume level's down. <laughs> uh, let's see. We're going to go live on Twitch TV, so I have the monitors pulled up on both phones just in case. And uh, let's grab our monitors. A minute, a minute, a minute, friends. Give me a minute. We're going to jump in over here. Amen. All right. Uh, what's going on here? There it is. Amen, friends. Good evening, uh, precious brothers and sisters. How y'all doing? Uh, amen. What happened here? Make sure I didn't lose my cords, cables, wires. There it is. Uh, amen. I just thought I heard something drop out. Wasn't quite sure what that was, but, uh, anyway, I thought I lost one of my cords here, but I didn't. It's there. Amen. All right. Give me a minute here, friends. Let me catch my breath and, uh, see where the volume level is at. I think it's okay. I think I've got it, uh, turned down here. Uh, amen. Let me check. Channel 3. <laughs> All right. Let's get a sound check, friends. Let's get a volume check here. All right. That sounds good. Let's pull up Channel 3. Uh, we got to get them going here. Come on now. All right. Let's get that going. Spreaker, how you doing? All right. And good evening, my precious friends over at Spreaker Channel 3. You're on the air, dialed in, tuned in. Let's get that thunder rolling here. And, of course, our church is on its feet. Well, we hope. <laughs> there it is. A little after 11 o'clock here, friends. Pastor Rick, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast Network. Blasting the devil back to the pits of hell, my friends. Because, you know, we got it, friends. So... Anyway, that's uh, we're dialed in. I think we're all set. Good to see you. Let's grab our monitors for now. Hopefully, nobody will call in, but uh, <laughs> I'll never know here. Uh, anyway, um, let's see. Try to get the monitors rolling here. So let's pull that up on the other one here. Twitch TV, hold your thoughts, you guys, if you can. I do appreciate that ever so much. You guys are always uh, awesome, and I appreciate you being on Twitch TV here. Uh, ministry podcast live at Twitch TV, and of course, live on, uh, what do we got? We got YouTube with us, Block Talk Radio, Anchor Castbox. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Uh, there's Anchor Castbox, and we've got live. Let's go ahead and do that here. Amen. There it is. So many things, friends. So many things to do here. 
Well, like I said, I was talking about that a brief uh, second here as we open up. Uh, my uh, stand, or what do we call it, uh, for the tablet was generally over here on the right-hand side in on the desk here. And that broke. Uh, so, uh, I have the tablet on the left side of me now. I did get a chance to order uh, a new stand for that, so I should be getting that pretty soon. And then I'll have it, you know, up where I can actually get to it and monitor it better. So, I uh, just kind of how things go here, friends. So, um, anyway, we are good. I think everything's dialed in. I did get a sound check here. Uh, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast Network, Pastor Rick here, live on StreamYard. I know it co- took a couple of days off uh, trying to get, you know, do the studies, get the rest here, and then we had some snow come in again. So, you know how that goes here, friends. Uh, always uh, one thing or another here. So, and then, of course, the equipment breaking down. So, that's usual, right? The The usual thing here. Anyway, let's uh, let's see if we can get rolling here. Amen. And uh, you guys can see I got the new background rolling. I think I did that on Sunday's uh, service there as well. Changing it up. I, amen. It's always a good thing to do here. Let's see. Let's catch my breath, my friends. You are live on the air Sunday. No, Sunday. It's Wednesday. See? It, this time just goes right on by the 7th of December already here, friends. Uh, I am your host, Pastor Rick here. Good to see you guys. Good to be back on the air here. Uh, Try to take care of business and uh, get everything going here and uh, get rolling. So live on StreamYard TV, my friends. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the church service. Doors are open. Uh, come on in. Church is on. Let's get to it. Got a lot to cover, friends. We're going to recap Philippians uh, 2, 3, and 4 uh, from Sunday service. And uh, I wanted to make sure we, you know, we got that in there. So let's see. Try to change it up. But uh, like I said, I, I missed a couple of nights there. I wanted to really... Uh, I really wanted to go on uh, Monday and Tuesday. Didn't get a chance to. Didn't get an opportunity uh, to uh, go on there and uh, take care of things. You know, as I did, you know, as I got busy and things happened, uh, friends, I I try to get on when I can. And, uh, you know, glad to do it. Grateful to do it. uh, Glad to be here, uh, friends. So, anyway, hopefully jumping back on schedule here. Uh, and I know it's been kind of infrequent, uh, you know, one thirty one day and then 10, 30, 11 o'clock the next. It's just because of the Wi-Fi problems I'm having uh, and some of the, uh, the you know, the, the regular problems and, and issues I've been having here with the uh, with the channel. So trying to bring it on back and get back on track here, friends. So Anyway, good to see you, friends. I appreciate y'all dropping by tonight, uh, late night here, and uh, just going through YouTube. Wanted to make sure all that was uh, all that was good and set. So as I'm just checking monitors here. Now we are live on Twitch TV. So if you can, friends, just hold your thoughts and your comments there. Drop on by and say howdy. I always appreciate that. It's always uh, a blessing you guys get to uh, stop by and, and uh, you know, say hi. I appreciate that. All right. So let's go back to our monitors here. And, uh, again, always trying to, uh, you know, change things up a little bit. You know, want to wanna make sure everything's good here. So let's see. All right. And, uh, again, trying to. You know, change up the channels here. You know, uh, we got StreamYard. We got Canva, of course. Uh, the audio stuff on Spreaker, Block Talk Radio, and more. And then, of course, we got Restream TV and Melon TV, uh, friends. So, anyway, let's play it right on in. We got to get, get that coffee, get that Bible, pens, papers, notebook, tablets, my friends, brothers, and sisters, for Wednesday the 7th. Right? Amen. Check the calendar twice. And it is the seventh. So I appreciate you guys being here. Uh 
Like I said, we're going to open up in the book of Philippians, and we're going to check out uh, again for a recap uh, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, you guys can read the uh, chapter 1 if you like on your time, on your, uh, you know, your time with God there. So let's pray it in, and then let's get right straight into church service here. Uh, friends, I do appreciate you all being here. I uh, hope you had a la- good last couple of days there since the last saw you. And uh, <laughs> I do, you know, uh, the schedule sometimes gets away from me and, uh, you know, I'll try to do what I can, but uh, just glad to get on here. Glad to be, uh, you know, uh, back on here. So, yeah, anyway, it was like Sunday afternoon was the last broadcast. So, you know, it was a hectic uh, rest of the Sunday and then Monday, Tuesday, <coughs> yesterday. So. Mercy, that came out of nowhere. All right, let's pray it in, friends, and let's get to it. We got that fresh cooked cup of coffee, uh, friends, here. So let's go ahead and roll with it. And uh, let's see, get my monitor together here uh, on Twitch TV. So I hope you guys can see and hear everything all right. I, you know, I do appreciate y'all jumping in, straighten out those microphones there. Right, uh, looks crooked, but probably not. All right, so looks like I'm on there. So just checking the monitors on Twitch TV. All right, Heavenly Father, I come before you right now, just so grateful and humbled. Always appreciate the opportunity I get to just to spend some time in the Word here uh, in church. Uh, you know, uh, now I'm praying for everybody hearing, watching, listening. Uh, you know, family. Uh, friends, brothers and sisters out there, uh, and everybody connected, everybody, you know, uh, everybody out there. So I pray for them, Father God. I lift them up and, and you know, uh, just encourage them and, uh, as you do. Uh, so I, I just pray for them. I, I pray for their strength, their courage, their, uh, you know, uh, I just pray, just lift them up, Father God. Just lift them up and, and give them that strength to keep going, keep Uh, moving forward day by day here as we lean on you we trust in you father god for sure uh and so i want to give this to you i want to just uh you know uh, give all this this is for you (coughs) father god even even the coughing even all the problems and issues i have father god this is for you and i'm glad to be here i'm glad to do this i'm glad to uh you know just keep going and keep moving on forward Father God, as I said, I pray for family, friends, everybody watching, uh, hearing, connected, uh, you know, whatever situation that they're dealing with and going through, Father God, I, I give them over to you I, uh, as I pray and lift them up in encouragement. Um, again, Father God, I, I thank you for watching over the studio, the ministry, uh, the channels here, the Wi-Fi, the, you know, this is your church, Father God, and I'm just a voice, I'm just a messenger here. Uh, so I uh, thank you for your protection, your guidance, your, uh, you're giving me that, that courage and, and uh, determination to keep fighting, keep going. So again, Father God, I'm humbled, grateful, and appreciative of the opportunities I get uh, to be here, just to share this word, it's just awesome. Father God, thank you so much for everything as you have brought me through that fire. And, uh, you know, you <laughs> you got me through to the light, Father God. So, uh, again, as I was just kind of pondering and thinking uh, over this, Father God, as uh, we take our last breath on earth, we take our first breath in heaven. That gives us uh, encouragement and, and hope uh, and um, peace, Father God. That's the that's the key right there is the peace that you give us that eternal peace. So Father God, I just again uh, humble to bring this message to uh, you know out here and uh, just grateful and thankful. Uh, I give it all over to you in Jesus' name. I pray right now. Amen and amen. All right, my friends. Holy cow! What's going on in your part of the world, there, friends? I appreciate y'all being here. Streamyard TV back in action again uh that is the wednesday and sunday service at night uh just didn't get a you know just didn't get a chance to to do what i wanted to do uh for the weekend and uh just try to 
jump right back in it, back on the scheduling here, as I try to do. Uh, all right, so I've got the monitors pulled up here. Uh, amen. And uh, so, yeah, Twitch TV, hold your thoughts, friends. If you can, I do appreciate that. I know, I know even though I say that a million times, I still get one or two comments or somebody coming through, uh, you know, uh, wanting to say something. And, you know, I, I can't stop it, but, hey, I appreciate you all jumping online and watching. So Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Rizzle TV, all your social media channels, friends, wherever you happen to listen to the podcast, uh, I'm grateful and very humbled, uh, friends, to, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> as I again have problems here with my headset, uh, <laughs> I just appreciate y'all jumping online and, you know, like I said, wherever you guys listen to your podcast, uh, wherever you, you know, dial in and tune in, I appreciate that. Um, you know, don't forget we got iHeartRadio, iTunes, uh, Spotify, uh, Google Podcast, Amazon Podcast, and uh, what was it? Uh, I know there's like tons more. Uh, we got Rizzle, like I said, and uh, pretty much uh, any channel where you guys listen to your podcast, friends, just dial it up and there you be. Well, let's get to our Bibles, and uh, hopefully I won't knock anything over here. Let me stretch out a little bit, uh, get that pulpit on over here, uh, and then we will go ahead and uh, just open up, friends, with uh, Philippians, friends. We're going to recap that, like I said, uh, from Sunday services. I did want to kind of go back in there and, and share that again. So let's go into our Bibles, friends, into the Word of God here, uh, as it is, uh, what, Wednesday night? Almost a little after 11.30, almost here. So let's keep going. Let's keep moving, friends. About an hour or two here, as normal as, you know, my, my usual. Uh, <laughs> I never know how long or, you know, how uh, much time I'm going to spend here, but uh, I'm grateful. Uh, honored and uh, humbled here to bring you guys the precious word of God, my friends. Come on in. And now, hopefully, my chair will be okay. I didn't get a new one yet. I'm still working on that. But uh, it, it it dropped. It fell down on me on the last broadcast. And so I didn't get a chance to, uh, you know, I tightened a little bit up and, and readjusted a little bit. But, uh, friends, thank you guys. Ah, uh, don't worry about the chair. Let's keep moving, friends. Amen. All right, well, let's read uh, some scripture here, friends, uh, from uh, chapter 2. Well, maybe. I don't know. What do you think, friends? Can can we handle the first uh, four uh, scriptures of, uh, what is it, Philippians? All right, let's go ahead and just do that, friends. Let me grab my... Let me grab my uh, podcast gear here, and uh, let me see if I can't uh, fix this. So I think we're going to open up, friends, and I'm going to change this out. We're going to open up right in uh, Philippians 1, uh, 1 to 4 here. And don't forget, I still have, by personal request uh, for uh, Jonah, friends, we're going to read the book of Jonah. Amen. All right, let's get to it. Got a lot to cover, my friends. Philippians chapter 1 through 4 here on a recap. Now, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making a uh, request for, where is that at? Uh, for joy, I believe, or with joy. There you go. I had to double check that there. And uh, let me fix a couple of spots I just noticed. It was out of sorts there. Uh, amen. 
always, again, let's look at that one more time here. Always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. From the, uh, let's see, from, uh, he says in the next verse here in six, being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye are, or ye all are, partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowls of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more uh, in knowledge and in all judgment. Amen. All right. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bulls uh, in uh, of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more uh, in knowledge and in all judgment, as we recap this again here, uh, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. All right, let's get back over here. And I, I missed a spot. <laughs> all right. Amen. All right. Anyway, let's keep going here. We got verse 11 in the book of Philippians chapter 1 here. Now, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ and of the glory and praise of God, uh, but I would ye should uh, understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather than unto the furtherance of the gospel. So that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confidence by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word uh, without fear. And some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also uh, of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I may set for the defense of the gospel. Friends, there you go. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therefore uh, in or therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all, friends, with all boldness, and there's the key right there, friends, with all boldness, church, amen, uh, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose, I what not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. And nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you uh, all for your furtherance, or let's see, for furtherance and joy of faith. This, or that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again, friends. And there you go on that. 
Only let your conversation, uh, amen, had to uh, wake up a sleeping phone there. Uh, all right. Uh, only let your conversation be as it became or becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come to see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the fruit or the <laughs> the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. Amen. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. And that all right having the same conflict which he saw in me and now here uh to be in me now i gotta fix that again as i re-highlight the uh scriptures there uh sometimes it don't work out so give me a second here let me let me see if i can fix this uh mess here all right, hopefully not too bad here. Well, anyway, I hope you guys had a great uh, last few days here. I hope you had a great Wednesday. Uh, amen. As we go into our Thursday morning, I believe. I know, it's just the time is just just passing so quickly here. Uh, amen. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's see. Um. All right, so let me go back to our Twitch channel monitor as I have got all the uh, the monitors and everything kind of pulled up here. Let's check our Twitter channel. Uh, amen. Let me find out what happened to that. All right, so what happened here? We lost our channel, so that went to sleep. Give me a second here. Uh, amen. <laughs> All right, let me find out. There it is. All right, so we've got the monitor back up here. Uh, amen. All right. Give me a minute here, friends. Let me find out. Um, amen. On our Twitter channel real quick here, live on the air. And uh, pulled up that. Amen. All right, so... Twitter is live, friends. If you happen to have a Twitter account, go on over there. Podcast 3 Live. We're on the air right now. And then as I check, uh, of course, Instagram, Rumble TV, Getter. Uh, where else? We got uh, all kinds of channels going on there. Tumblr is still around. TikTok is on. Instagram, like I said, uh, very good and uh, rolling here. Amen. So uh, just kind of rolling over a couple of channels here. I wanted to make sure everything was going uh, well here on them. So let's pull that monitor back up. Now, again, you guys hold your thoughts, please, if you can, on, um, <laughs> on, uh, I just got, I just got a quick message here from one of my friends watching um on the twitch channel if you guys just hold your thoughts and your comments uh until uh afterwards so i get a chance to talk to you amen all right so that's it good stuff always checking it out all right so let's go we are on i believe chapter two for our recap of the book of philippians friends so let's grab a couple of extra notes there. And, hmm. All right, chapter two. If there be therefore any consolation, uh, I believe that is in Christ here, if any comfort, and let me get that together, uh, of love, of any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowls and mercies fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through 
strife, or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves, and look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, friends, as we watch this, the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself, as we were talking about the devil again there, of no reputation and took him in the form of a servant. It was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto, the, uh, unto death, even the death of the cross. Now wherefore God also hath highly exalted himself, friends. Uh, right there. And let me go back over that. And given him a name which is above every name, as we know. Now, and the next verse here, that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, church, of things in heaven and of things in earth, and thine under the, or thines under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the Father. Uh, or God the Father, wherefore, my beloved, as he says, as ye always obeyed, uh, let's see, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation, church, with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, uh, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Ah, uh, man. Now, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, friends. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in a day of uh, Christ that I may not run in vain, neither labored in vain. And yea, if I be offered uh, upon the sacrifice and the service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with uh, you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. Friends, but we trust in the Lord to send, as he says, but I trust in the Lord uh, Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you that I may also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who uh, will naturally care for your state, for all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. But ye know uh, the proof of him that as a, a son with the Father, he has served with me in the gospel. Amen. All right. My glasses are giving me problems tonight. I don't know what it is, but uh, I'll keep rolling here. All right. Uh, in verse 21, for all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. Uh, but ye know the proof of him that as a son with the Father, he has served with me in the gospel. Him, therefore, I hope to send presently, uh, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. All right. But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. All right. Verse 25 here, friends. Yet I supposed it necessary to send you to Ephrodite, uh, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all, and was full of heaviness, uh, because that ye had heard that he had been sick. 
For indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also. Yet I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him therefore the more carefully, that when you see him again, you may rejoice, and that I may be the less sorrowful. Amen. All right. And let's get a couple of notes together there. Uh, receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and hold such in reputation, because for the work of Christ he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life to supply your lack of service towards me. Now, we're going to roll right into chapter 3 here, friends. Let me grab that fresh cup of coffee. Uh, amen. Amen. All right. Give me a second. Let me get some coffee here. Friends, take a quick break and grab your coffee as well. Amen. All right. Oop. Make sure I don't drop that off of there. Got that fresh eggnog flavoring going on. Still rolling with the eggnog, my friends. Got to keep doing that. Amen. All right, let's keep reading our Bibles here, friends, on this late night uh, third service. Where am I at here? Uh, <laughs> I never know. Uh, I think it's the third service. Um, I did my updates and stuff earlier, but uh, you know how that goes uh, every day. But try to get back on schedule here, friends. Anyway, let's keep rolling. We got chapter three in the book of Philippians, friends, as we continue our recap. Now, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous. For you, it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, and beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might have also, or might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof, he might trust in the flesh uh, more, let's go to the next page here, uh, more circumcised, the eighth day of the stock of Israel. Now make sure I'm in the right page here. Uh, all right. So, uh, amen. Of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of the Hebrews is touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law and blameless, as it says. But what things are gained to me that I count as loss for Christ? Yea, doubtless that I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ and be found of him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Amen. Double checking my volume here. All right, looks like it's okay. All right, had to make sure my volume level was good on the mixer here. Always having issues you know, somehow with that. So I'll try to get, make sure that was uh, good there. All right, let's backtrack and find out where I left off. Cause you know, I kind of got distracted there for a second. All right. So let's see. Uh, try to go back in to find out where I was at last as always. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. All right, let's roll on to verse 9 here. Let's just go right there. And be found in him, not having uh, mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by 
faith. Now I gotta go back over here and uh, reset this because I really messed this up. So bear with me, you guys. Hold that thought again. Uh, amen. All right. I'll let that set. So uh, as we were in nine uh, here, friends, let me go ahead and get that taken care of. All right. Uh, verse 10. How about that, right? Now that I may know him and that the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made comfortable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Uh, let's see. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. And brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. And I keep tripping up. Hold on here, friends. I keep tripping up my headset. And again, that is the monitor for uh, the mixer here, so I can hear what's going on there. All right, good to see you all. Good to uh, see you dropping in on the channel here for a second. We are recapping, uh, where was it? We're recapping Philippians 1 through 4. And uh, I just went on to... Uh, <laughs> try to adjust something and i forgot what i was where i was going anyway let's keep rolling with it friends if you got your bibles with you uh amen um let's see let's go there um <laughs> and, all right there it is all right so philippians we're rolling through philippians here uh, all right, so let's kind of jump over here, and I believe we were at about 14, verse 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now let us, therefore, as many uh, as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. And nevertheless, where two we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, and let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so, as ye have us for an example. Amen. For uh, many walk of whom I have, there it is, told you often and now tell you even weeping uh, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction whose God is their belly and those or whose glory is in their shame who mind earthly things for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we uh, look for the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the work, or working, uh, whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. All right, let's roll on to chapter four here, friends. Now, therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast, church, in the Lord, as he says and tells us here, friends, stand fast in the Lord. Amen. My dearly beloved, I beseech you, Odious, I beseech you to say uh, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I found my spot that I need to fix here. Uh, so that's where I was going with that. And I I didn't even notice where it was at till just now. So let me fix that spot. Amen. All right. We're in chapter four here in Philippians. All right. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, 
with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life and rejoice in the Lord always. And again, church, I say rejoice. Amen. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Uh, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. What a good uh, verse there. Now, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, uh, whatsoever things are pure. Amen. Uh, where we go? All right. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, uh, and there be any praise, think on these things. And these things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen of me, my friends, we got to do it. Amen. He says, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity, friends. All right. Almost going to sneeze again. I think all that spray that we been putting on everything is all kind of faded out so it's just now it's just a cold uh you know uh, as it's uh been single digits like i said it's uh, been pretty cold up here and well you know just kind of holding on <laughs> amen all right uh good stuff there oh what did he say where are we at here uh, not that I speak in respect of want. I believe we were in verse 11. Uh, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therefore, with to be content, friends. I know both how to be abased and I know how to be, or how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to be abound, or to abound and suffer need. Friends, look to your neighbors, as I uh, adjust my microphone, and say, neighbor, I can do all things through Christ. Amen? Right there, as we see in verse 13, I can do all things uh, through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And I got to get an amen on that one. All right, notwithstanding, ye have all done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, which I departed from Macedonia, or when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but uh, ye only. But even in Thessalonica, ye set once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Amen. All right. Let's get that mic out there. Uh, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Aphroditus the things which are uh, were sent from you in odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. All right, but my God, again, friends, look to your neighbor and say, as I was gonna, <laughs> as I was gonna sneeze, but my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Jesus Christ. Now unto God and our Father be uh, glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus, the brethren which are with me greet you all the saints salute you chiefly that are of caesar's household the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you all and amen all right good stuff there always enjoy that uh again just kind of recapping from sunday service let me get my clipboard here all right 
What is going on? There it is. I know, I know, I know, I know. Let's see. We want to do uh, set up here. Give me a second, you guys. And 11 o'clock. Wow, our late night service here. And again, that was just a recap of Philippians here, friends. I wanted to make sure we got that. So. Uh, always a good, uh, you know, good stuff to get in there, too. So, um, what do we got? What do we got, my friends? That's what I want to know. Uh, amen. All right. Uh, get a couple of notes together there. And I believe we are going to go into um, our podcast notes, friends, our opening scripture notes. And then have I got a lot for you, my friends. Amen. Let's take that out. Um, I kind of doubled up on my scriptures, so let me kind of adjust that real quick and fix that. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. It just happened, and I I actually doubled up on the on the scriptures. So bear with me, you guys. Again, um, I don't know why I did that, but as I as I often will do, uh, I kind of double up on stuff and, uh, you know, it's just with the notes and stuff. So I think we're okay there and I'll, I'll loop around it, right? Amen. All right. So, yeah, let's go into, and I'm going to put this over here uh, so I can get to it. Let's go. And where are we going to go at here? Ba 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 da ba 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 da. All right, let's go back over here. Amen. A little out of breath, I've been <laughs> running around trying to take care of things, and uh, you know um, how that goes, right? Um, let's see. So, wait a minute. I found my spot that I wanted to go to. Amen. All right. Give me a second here, friends. Let me recap a couple of things. I want to make sure I straighten this out. Um, <laughs> all right. Give me a second here. Let me fix this. I believe. And that is there. Right. Oops, Don't, I did that wrong. All right, bear with me, you guys. Hold that thought. All right, so I've got that taken care of. And all right, where's the next one? 1040 is what I want. All right. Lots to take care of here, friends. You know how that goes here. Amen. And, uh, all right, so I think we're ready to continue here, friends. I want to get into our podcast notes, our scripture notes here. Uh, and let me go ahead and pull that main page up there again. Amen. All right. So, and don't forget, we're going to go into the Orthodox Study Bible Archive notes there, friends, and the new series notes as well as I always enjoy doing and uh, sharing those with you here. Uh, amen. All right. Let's keep rolling. Well, get a hold of me, friends. You know where to contact me at, the uh, ministry channel here at Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast at Yahoo.com, the official email address for the ministry, and I do answer all those emails myself. Let's get to it. Dear God, I know that I am a sinner. And I need a Savior. I want to turn away from my sinful life to the life you have planned for me. Uh, please forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me of my past. Make me new. I know your son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for me. And I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. At this very moment, I accept, confess, and proclaim Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. All right. To live in my heart from this day forward. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. 
that has saved me from my sins and has given me uh, eternal life. And please send your Holy Spirit to guide me and to help me to do your will for the rest of my life. Church friends, brethren and sisters, as we say in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. All right, uh, let's see. I think I need some more coffee. I think that's on the menu here. So let me grab that. Again, kind of got this little uh, little touch of a bug there. I don't know what's going on, but, uh, you know, as I continue to work outside in, in cold weather, uh, you know, getting that snow and ice off the, uh, you know, the main driveway and, you know, the, the guest VIP section there, too, uh, I've been helping out some neighbors, and, uh, you know, it's not easy. You guys know that, and a uh, little rough. <laughs> it's cold. It's a little rough out there, uh, even with all the, uh, even with all the, um, you know, all the uh, clothing and being trying to be warm. It's rough. So let me get coffee. Amen. All right. Make sure that. They're there. I had to make sure the microphones were still uh, attached because I never know. And let me scoot up here. Oh, <laughs> so much to do. Uh, you guys you guys know. You guys do this full time. You know what I'm talking about. There's a lot to set up and a lot to do and a lot to, you know, dial in and stuff. Of course, you guys know uh, I multitask. I multi-record on several different uh you know, uh, phones, tablets, laptops. I got monitors pulled up. The three different, uh, let's see, one, uh, two, three. Try to remember all the mics and stuff. Um, not that I don't mind. Like I said, I always I always appreciate the opportunity to do these. But there's a lot involved here. So uh, anyway, what a, it's just awesome, uh, you know, just awesome opportunity to, to do this and podcast and, and do this full-time ministry. So it is my full-time position, friends, every day, seven days a week. And I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, amen. So that's why, again, I had to kind of check, make sure the clips were still on there. I've got the, like I said, kind of the top of the hour here. Um, my uh, stand that I had for the uh, for the tablet, which was on the right, broke. The bottom part broke, so I got another one coming, a little bit better, a little bit stronger, and so for now, it's sitting on my desk, on the left side of the desk here, and so I've kind of got everything kind of spread out here, so we'll see how it goes, but anyway, I got a, a better one coming, and hopefully it will last a little bit longer than the other one, right? Always try to improve here. I want to make sure you guys get the best quality content you possibly could get. Uh, whether, you know, just listening to the audio or watching the live stream uh, content. And uh, that is um, my goal. That's the, the, you know, the determination to make this uh, good content for you. Uh, you know, quality over, what's the word, quantity or something like that. Uh, amen. And so that's what I'm always striving for and uh, trying to get real good uh quality content for you amen all right um yeah like i said i i enjoy being on the channels on Streamyard too we, we you know thanks to our friends that uh covered that that is awesome so thank you for that uh but yeah jumping jumping on the channels is you know as much as i can kind of changing things up a little bit in the background here uh i kind of thought about putting that wood paneling all the way across the whole backdrop that, that's kind of cool though i kind of enjoy that kind of like that uh so i'm trying it i, I just got a few panels on the left side of the uh, studio here uh but you know, like i said we'll we'll kind of see how things go here as so i'm just kind of uh you know uh trying to improve i want to try to improve the best i can here for you anyway let's continue we got some podcast notes friends we got the serenity prayer Again, live late night. You hit that midnight hour, my friends. You're live on the air. Pastor Rick, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast uh, Network on StreamYard TV, friends. Amen. All right. Um, let's keep rolling. Uh, friends, as we get to our serenity 
prayer. All right. Getting stuff coming in on the uh, Twitter page, friends. Amen. All right. And our friends over on, in Japan, my, my wonderful uh, sister in Christ there. Konnichiwa, domo arigato, uh, Suki. My other friends. I got so many of them there. It's awesome. Anyway, I, <laughs> it's hard to keep track of everything. So I'm just kind of watching monitor. I want to make sure everything's uh, good over here. All right. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Ah, living one day at a time, amen. Enjoying one moment at a time and accepting hardships as the pathway to peace. Taking as Jesus did the sinful world, as it is, not as I would have it, and trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will. That I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. All right. Good to see you guys. We're running through our, uh, where is it at here? We're running through our podcast scripture notes on this late night, Thursday morning, friends. All right. How about we swing into the Lord's Prayer, brothers and sisters? Come on now. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Church, come on, you know what time it is, my friends. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, so just watching the clocks here. We got Anchor Cast Box over here. We got our friends over at Tin Can on the left here. Uh, amen. Multitasking, multi recording. Got to get that word of God out, my friends. That's right. All right, let's boot up and suit up, friends. Let's run on over to Ephesians 6 10 through 20. The whole armor of God. Not a part, not a piece, not a latchet, but the whole armor armor of god and that gets me every time wow did i just get a holy spirit rush on that one awesome all right now finally my brother and sisters he tells us to be strong in the lord and in the power of his might now put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, and against the the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which we know is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. All right, you've been booted up and suited up, my friends. You're ready to go. As we are continuing here on this late night podcast, tad bit over midnight, you're in that midnight hour, friends. I'm bringing the gospel right to you. Uh, amen. Got a lot left to do and a lot more to read here for you. Now, we're going to go, friends, <clears throat> we're going to, as I continue, uh, and let me get my clipboard out of the way there. Um, I'm going to look, as you guys know, um, I 
uh, work with a little bit, and I, I was kind of under tutelage there, um, with a uh, Orthodox study Bible, uh, or another Orthodox pastor, which was a really great opportunity to study. Um, and I uh, was given a uh, an Orthodox study Bible, friends. So, uh, as I've been studying and reading this for years, uh, <laughs> hey, man, let me try to get everything together here. Uh, it's been pretty awesome. So, hey, man. All right, there's Tin Can. What? There it is. Uh, all right, Tin Can's rolling through. Hey, Amen. So, anyway, I had the opportunity to, to kind of study under an uh, Orthodox uh, pastor there. It's pretty awesome. So, I was able to get a Orthodox study Bible, friends. So, Anyway, we're going to kind of recap here the uh, Orthodox Study Bible uh, archive series here as I'm digging into my notes. Uh, we're going to look at Ezekiel, friends. We're going to dig back in and go to Ezekiel 38 and 39. So if you got your Bibles, go ahead and uh, get them out and let's look at this. Uh, amen. All right. So there's that on Tin Can. Amen. All right. Let's roll on over. We got uh, the monitors. Let's go ahead and pull up. Uh, let's see. Amen. There's our monitor here on YouTube. Um, amen. Give me a second here. All right. <laughs> All the monitors are crazy. Uh, so, yeah, let's dig in, friends. Ezekiel 38, 39, and, and let's see what the Spirit has to share with us, uh, friends, on this. Now, I've read over this. Uh, there's so much, uh, friends, as we look at uh, Gog and Magog, which is very, I mean, we see that every single day here. Uh, friends, just dial in. You'll see it. Uh so let me let me go ahead and read this, friends. And, and if you got, you know, if you happen to have uh, your Bibles with you for church tonight, uh, this morning, let's look at uh, Gog and Magog, and let's look at Ezekiel, uh, friends, chapters thirty-eight and thirty-nine. Let's go ahead and read that right now. Now, uh, and it might be a little wording might be a little off or a little different, but. Let's just stick to it, friends. Good to see you guys this morning. You're on the air. We got uh, StreamYard here. Amen. Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast Network. Uh, Pastor Rick here. And we're going to look, uh, friends, at the uh, Orthodox Study Bible Archive Series. So let's read it. Let's uh, look at uh, Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39. Amen. And Gog will invade Israel. Now again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, uh, Son of man, let's see, he says, Set your face against Gog in the land of Magog, the ruler of Rush, Meshach, and Tubal. And prophesy against him and say to him, Thus saith the Lord and Master, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the rule of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I shall gather you and all your army, horses and horsemen, all armed with, uh, <laughs> see, with uh, breastplates and a large assembly with shields helmets and swords, along with Persians, Ethiopians, and Libyans, with the shields and helmets, and also Gomer, uh, and all belonging to him, and the house of Togamah, from the far north, and all belonging to him, and many nations with you. Be prepared, as I hear the Spirit say, Francis he's telling us, be prepared, right? Get your house in order. Amen. Now, we got to write that down as our key verse there. He says here, be prepared, friends. Prepare yourself and all your gathering assembly or assembled with you. 
and you will be as an advanced guard for me. He will be prepared after many days and will come in the last years. He will come in the land turned away from the sword when many are gathered together from the nations against the land of Israel, which was entirely a desert. And he will come forth from the nations against all who dwell in peace. And you shall arrive like rain, like a cloud to cover the land, you and all your army, and many nations with you. All right, so let's get that together there. And all your army and many nations, as it says, with you. Um, all right, so let's go to the next verse. Thus says the Lord and Master, in that day it shall also come to pass that the words will arise in your heart, and you will think evil thoughts. For you will say, I will go up to the rejected land, and I will come against those who live in peace and quiet, and who dwell in a land that has no wall, and neither bars nor gates to plunder them and take spoils. Uh, I will turn your hand against a nation gathered from many nations, which acquired possessions and in the inhabitants of the midst of the land. Uh, right now, uh, as he says, Sheba Didan and Carthage, <laughs> Carthaginian, I believe. Uh, let's see, Carthaginian, there it is, merchants, and all uh, their villages shall say to you, you come for to take a spoil and pray and take spoils. Let's get that spot there. You gather your assembly to take silver and gold and to carry off possessions and take spoils. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and stay or say to Gog, thus says the Lord, <coughs> uh, will you not arise in that day? The day my people is, uh, let's see, Israel dwell in peace. And yes, you will come from your place out of the far north you and the many nations with you, all riding uh, on horses and assembly in a mighty army. You will come upon my people, Israel, like a cloud, friends, uh, a cloud to cover the land. It shall come to pass in the last days that I will, uh, let's see, I will bring you against my land that all the nations may know me. Uh, when I am sanctified, let me get that over here. Uh, let's see. Let's get uh, a couple of quick notes together here. Amen. Now, uh, before, or you before them, thus says the Lord and Master to Gog. Amen. Now, you are of he of whom I spoke in former days by the hand of my servants, the prophets of Israel, in those days and years that I would bring you to against uh, or up against them. Now, let's move on to the next part here as we are in, uh, uh, let's see, uh, we got uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39. Let's look at this church at Gog is judged, friends. Amen. Now, thus it shall come to pass in that day that Gog uh, let's see, God comes against the land of Israel. Says the Lord and Master that my anger and jealousy shall rise in the fire of my wrath. I have spoken, certainly in that day. There shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. Even the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the wild animals of the plain, all the reptiles that creep on the ground, and all the people on the face of the land will shake before or because of the Lord's presence, friends. Also, the mountains will break apart. The valleys will be done away with. And every 
wall will fall to the ground. I will also summon every fear against Gog, says the Lord. For the sword of every man shall be against his brother. I will judge him with death and with bloodshed, friends. Wow, that is deep. I wouldn't want to do it. Wouldn't want to be in that wrath of God as we are in, friends, Ezekiel 38 and 39. I think we're at about, uh, let's see, verse 22. Uh, I will judge him with death and bloodshed, and I will uh, send a flooding rain and hailstones, uh, right? And fire and brimstone against him and everyone with him, and also against the many nations with him. For I shall be magnified, sanctified, and glorified. Amen. And known in the sight of many nations that shall know that I am the Lord, friends. Let's uh, roll on here to, uh, again, we are in Ezekiel, uh, doing the, uh, we're checking out the archives, uh, friends, the archive series for the Orthodox Study Bible Notes here, friends. So let's go to verse, or chapter 39, uh, as it says, the defeat of Gog, friends. Now, as for you, son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the rule of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will gather and guide you and raise you up from the far north and bring you upon the mountains of Israel. Then I will destroy the bow in your left hand, or the bow in your left hand, and the, and the arrows in your right hand, and I will cast you down upon the mountains of Israel. For you all with you shall fall, and I shall give the nations with you to the multitude of birds, to every fowl. Uh, but I will give you to the, uh, see you to all the wild animals of the field to be devoured for you will fall on your face in the open plain because I have spoken. He says, uh, says the Lord, I will also send fire upon Gog and the coastal peoples shall dwell in peace. Then they will know that I am the Lord. And my holy name will be known in the midst of the people of Israel. And my holy name will no longer be desecrated. Uh, the nations will also know that I am the Lord, he says. The Holy One, right? As we go on to the next verse here. The Holy One in Israel. And behold, it is coming. <clears throat> and you will know it shall be, says the Lord and Master. This is the day of which I have spoken. Those who dwell in the cities of Israel will also go and make a fire with the weapons, the shields, and the spears, the bows and arrows, and the javelins and lances. They shall keep the fire burning for seven years. So they will not take away or take any wood from the field, nor cut down any of the forest. Rather, they will burn the weapons and plunder those who plundered them and despoil those who took spoils from them, says the Lord. Now, let's look at a, bur or a burial for Gog here, friends. In that day it shall come to pass that I will give Gog a place of renown, a monument in Israel, a common burial place of those who uh, come to the sea. And there they shall bury Gog and all his multitude round about the edge of the valley. And it will be called the burial place of Gog. Uh, the house of Israel shall bury them that the land may be cleansed in the space of seven months. 
and yet all the people of the land will bury them, and it shall be a place of renown for them in the day I was magnified, says the Lord. So they will appoint men continually to pass through the land to bury those bodies yet on the ground, to cleanse it by the end of seven months. And they will seek them out, everyone who passes through the land and sees a man's bones will also set a marker by it until the grave diggers shall bury it uh, in the burial place of Gog. Indeed, the name of the city shall be a burial place. Thus, the land will be cleansed. All right, quite a bit of verses here, friends. So hold that thought. Let's keep going. Amen. And let me fix a couple of spots here. I just noticed on this one, I have I have got a chance to get through this one uh, much at all, but uh, it is quite uh, quite awesome, and uh, I am blessed that I actually have it. Amen. So anyway, let's get a couple of spots taken care of here. Oh, uh, boy. Uh, give me a second here. We'll uh, kind of fix that as I go later on or something. I'll go ahead and roll with it, friends. Amen. Let's keep going. Uh, let's see. Where did I leave off? That's the question of the day here. Uh, as we just read, a burial uh, for Gog here in Ezekiel uh, 38 and 39. Uh, let's see. I think we're at about the bottom part of it here. So let's keep rolling with that. Now, as for you, son of man, say, uh, right? Uh, Thus says the Lord, speak to every sort of bird and every wild animal of the field. Assemble yourselves and come gather together from all sides to my sacrifice which I offered up for you a great sacrifice on the mountains of Israel. And you will eat meat and drink blood. You will eat the flesh of mighty men and drink the blood of the rulers of the earth. Uh, the rams, the young bulls, and the male goats, for they are all fatted animals. You will eat fat until you are full. All right. Uh, and... He says, as we continue on this one, drink wine until you are drunken from my sacrifice, which I slaughtered for you. You will be filled at my table, eating horse and rider, and the mighty man and every warrior, says the Lord. I will set my glory in your midst, and all the nations will see my judgment, which I executed. And my hand, which I laid on them. But in the house of Israel will know that I am the Lord their God from this day forward. All the nations will also know that the house of Israel was led into captivity on account of their sins. Now watch that, friends. Did you hear what that said? Uh, as he looked at this, let, let's go ahead and look at this again here. Uh, all the nations will also know that the house of Israel was led into captivity on account of their sins, church. Wow. There it is, right? Um, all right. Because they rejected me, so I turned my face away from them and delivered them into the hands of their enemies. And they all fell by the sword according to their uncleanness and according to their lawless actions. I dealt with them and turned my face away from them. Therefore, says the Lord and Master, friends, now I will turn my back the captivity of Jacob and all them are all have mercy on the house of Israel. And I will be jealous for the sake of my holy name. They shall bear their dishonor and wrongdoing they have committed when they dwell upon the land in peace. And thus, when I bring them back from the nations and gather them from the countries of the nations, I will sanctify, or sanctify among them in the sight of the nations. 
All right, let's fix that spot there. Then they will know that I am the Lord, their God. When I reveal myself to them among the nations, but I will not turn away my face from them anymore because I poured out my anger on the house of Israel, says the Lord and Master. Wow, friends, come on now. Ezekiel 38 and 39. Uh, what a powerful couple of scriptures that is, friends. Uh, pretty amazing. All right, so there you go. Laid it out, Gog and Magog, as we are clearly seeing in the end times here, friends, as he tells us to be prepared, friends. Are we prepared? Is our house in order? That's the question, uh, friends, that we got to be looking at. Amen. I was trying to find where that part was. Uh, I wanted to share that with you again here. Uh, I believe it was in 38. Uh, right there. Uh, chapter 38 in Ezekiel. Let's go back to that, friends. Uh, and I believe it is about verse... Uh, let's see. Let's backtrack just a, a tad bit. About 7. Now, he tells us, friends. Now, watch this. Uh, be prepared. Prepare yourselves and all your gathering assembled with you. And you will be as an advanced guard for me. He will, let's see, he will be prepared for or prepared after many days and will come in the last years. He will come into the land turned away from the sword when many are gathered together from the nations against the land of Israel, which was entirely a desert. And he will come forth from the nations against all who dwell in peace. You shall arrive like rain, like a cloud to cover the land, you and all your army and the many nations uh, with you. Now, as you study and as you read this part here, friends, very clear to me, is our house in order? Are we seeking the Lord every single day? Be prepared. Prepare yourself and all your gathering assembled with you. Something to think about. I tell you, man, oh, man, I get so much out of this, uh, friends. It's unbelievable. Uh, so as I, I, I had to, to kind of look at that again, take a double take at it, and kind of recap that. Ezekiel 38 and 39, friends, clearly telling us to be prepared. Well, we are in the end times, and, uh, you know, that's what I uh, I keep doing these podcasts. Uh, I, I We got to keep moving forward, friends. Press in, dig in, hold on, and keep moving, my brothers and sisters. Uh Amen. All right. So I'm just kind of looking through here. All right. What do we got on the menu? That's the million dollar question of the night, my friends, or this morning as we are already into our morning here. Good to see you. The 8th already of December. Uh, where are we at? We're on re uh, StreamYard, friends. Hanging out. Studio A. Church is on. Let's get going. We got a little bit more for you this morning. Where's the time? Uh, you know, we're going to do our usual two hours here. But uh, anyway, come on in, have a seat in the front row, relax, chill out, kick your feet up. You're in church. Let's get to it. We're going to go on over real quick here, friends, if you will. Isaiah 58 and 59, right? I think that's what's on the schedule there. Uh, Isaiah 58 and 59. Uh, you're here live. Good morning, my friends. Pastor Rick, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast Network. Uh, hanging out Studio A in on StreamYard this morning. Uh, amen. It's, uh, what is it, the 11 o'clock uh, Wednesday late night, uh, third, uh, third, <laughs> third service podcast. I know that's a lot to read. Well, let's get to it, friends, as we are in again. Uh, as we're moving right along here to Isaiah 58 and 59, we are back in the King James here. 
Now he says, let me go back up to 57, verse 21. And uh, as I saw that too, there is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Now let's go to 58. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteously. Amen. And forsook not. Let me get that uh, highlighter here. I do. I forgot something again as I kind of going through everything. So bear with me, you guys. Hold that thought again. Not too much. Just a little spot on the bottom of it. Uh, you guys know I'm uh, kind of redoing everything. I want to make sure the notes are together here. All right, let's keep rolling in Isaiah 58 and 59, right? All right. Now, the ordinances of their God, they seek of me the ordinances of justice. They take uh, delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted? Say then. And thou seest not. Amen. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge. And behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. And behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. It is such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul. Uh, It is, let's see, is it to bow down his head as a, uh, let's see, as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast? And an acceptable day of the Lord. Is not this uh, the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness? Uh, To undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free? And that ye break every yoke? Uh, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and to thou bring the poor or cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? When shall thy light break forth as the morning? And thine hell shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shalt they thou call, and the Lord shall answer, thou shalt cry, and he will or shall say, Here I am, he says, if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall the light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness uh, he as, let's see, and thy darkness he as the noon day. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in uh, drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Amen, friends. Good to see you. We're in uh, Isaiah 58 and 59 this morning. All right, let's keep rolling. We got a few more scriptures here for you. Uh, amen. So, verse twelve, Isaiah fifty-eight, and they, they that shall be, let's see, of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt rise up the foundations of many generations, 
and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, friends. Write that down in your notes. There you go. The repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. All right. Now, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, uh, the holy of the Lord, uh, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Now, uh, then, let's see. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, the father, or thy father. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Amen. Feeling like I'm going to sneeze again. I don't know. Sneeze in aisle three coming up just in case. Friends, I, I never know here. Uh, I feel it. So anyway, let's keep rolling. We got 59. And behold, the Lord, or the Lord's hand is not shortened. As again, we are in Isaiah 59 here, friends. Good to see you guys this morning. That it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities, friends separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth the truth or for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction uh, are in their paths. The way of peace, peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment far from us, neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, friends, right? We wait for light. But behold obscurity for brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as uh, if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. All right. We are in desolate places as dead men. We roar all like bears and mourn so or mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none for salvation, but it is far uh, off from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, concerning and uttering from the heart words of falsehoods. And judgment is turned away backward and justice standeth uh, uh, far off, for truth is fallen in the street and uh, 
equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw and displeased him that there was no judgment front. Right there. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that uh, there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate. Now watch this, friends. Uh, if you're taking notes, and I hope you are, because, well, we're in church this morning. As he says in verse 17, <clears throat> For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head, and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, uh, accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversaries. Uh, recompense to his enemies, to the islands, he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. And the enemy shall come in like a flood. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Friends, in verse 20, And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. All right, that is upon thee in my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seeds, seeds. As he says, multitudes of generations, my friends, saith the Lord from henceforth and forever. Deep stuff, friends. You got to read it. Amen. It's right there. All right. We've got a couple of minutes on the clock, but we're going to keep rolling. Let me get some coffee. My throat's getting a little dried out there. Again, kind of a, kind of dealing with a little bit of a bug. Not sure what it is. I'm pretty sure it's just, uh, you know, being out in the cold and everything and working. Uh, and then, you know, you get all worked out and worked up and you come on back in and it's nice and toasty and warm. So kind of going back and forth with that. So uh, I'm praying against it. Not, not going to happen to me, but, uh, you know, I can still kind of feel it. So I've been taking precautions and. You know, having some of that tea, amen. I know, which my friends are saying, well, you ought to drink more tea instead of coffee. But y'all know, it's coffee time and Bible time here in the studio, friends. Come on now. You all know me and my coffee, friends. I got to have my coffee. All right, lots to cover. Like I said, a lot to uh, take a look at here. We're rolling right through on this Wednesday. Well, now Thursday, but uh, we started this, and it's uh, Wednesday. Hey, man, boy, oh, boy, I got a lot for you. Um, hey, man. All right. Um, ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Let's keep rolling. We got to go to Romans. Um. Give me a second here, and we want three, right? Romans chapter three, my friends. Yep, that's where we be. All right, let me adjust my volume level here. Uh, we're closing out our Block Talk Radio, but it, actually, because I got grandfathered into the channel, it kind of gives me a little extra couple hours there, whatever, three hours or something to broadcast here, which is nice because, uh, you know, I like to rabble here a little bit. So, uh, amen. So I'm just kind of monitoring uh, out of the channel three here. Give me a second. And, uh, yeah, right here on the monitors over here, I'm kind of just monitoring uh, volume levels here. We're going to keep rolling, friends. You're in your going into your second hour here, friends. Can you believe that? Awesome. Almost second hour anyway. 
Uh, yeah, Wednesday the 7th, started on Wednesday 7th, and we're rolling right into uh, the 8th. You're live on the air, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast Network, Pastor Rick here. Rolling on into Thursday, friends. Let's keep going. Lots for you. Let's uh, keep rolling here. And we're going to look, friends, if you go with me, if you will, and I appreciate your time. Thanks for stopping by the church here, friends. I appreciate that. Let's get to the next chapter. And, oops, <laughs> hang on. Uh, my pages aren't cooperating with me there. Chapter 3. Uh, Romans, friends. So let's go to that chapter right now. Again, as I'm just kind of monitoring uh, the uh, monitors there, right? Is that does that sound right? Monitoring the monitors. All right, stretch out, relax, rest, friends. Be at peace. You're gonna be all right. It's gonna be okay. Uh, let's roll on into our second hour here, brothers and sisters. You're in church. Good morning to you. Amen. I hope you are doing well. All right. So Romans 3, friends. Let's go ahead and go into that real quick here. Well, not too quick. We don't want to trip and stumble here, friends. We want to stand upright. Amen. All right. Romans 3. Let's read it together, my brothers and sisters, live this morning. Good to see you. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God, of Yahweh. For what, if some did not believe, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, he says, and yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man, God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world, church? For if the truth of God hath more abound uh, through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil, that good may come, whose damnation is just. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles uh, that they are all under sin. Mercy. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Uh, they are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Uh, let's see. Let's get a couple of notes together here. Uh, he says in verse 13, Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. And verse 16, Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that uh, what things soever the law saith, 
it saith to them who are under the law. And as you know, we are not under the law. We are under grace, friends. Now, let's keep keep let's keep it on track before I lose track and go off the track there again, you know, if we go off the off the path here. So let's stay in the lane. Amen. All right, that mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For if by the law is the knowledge of sin, but now the righteousness of God without the law to manifested, or uh, to manifest, not right? Manifested, right? That's what that says. All right, of, let's see, uh, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ and all, and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There it is. In case you're looking for it, you just found it, friends, right there in uh, Romans 3 and about verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace to the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, uh, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. As I said, friends, we were bought at a price lest we forget. Amen. All right, let's go on over to 26 here. To declare, I say at this time, uh, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus who is boasting then it is excluded by what law of works nay by by the law of faith therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law is he the God of the Jews only is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. All right. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. All right. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. There you go. That's right on time that we need. Amen. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. We're going to go back over to Psalm, friends. Let's check that out. I wanted to go back in there as well. Amen. And I uh, hope you guys are doing well. All right. Um, right. Let's see. We got... Psalms 1 and 2. Let's go ahead and read that. All right. Give me a second here. Let me get that together. All right, friends. Let's check it out. We got Psalms chapter 1 and 2 this morning. Good to see you. Good to be here with you. Got your Bibles out with you. Well, you know, we're in church hanging out. Uh, we got, we got our friends over at, uh, where are we at? Uh, Twitch TV, Ministry Podcast Live over there. Good to see you guys right here at YouTube. And, of course, all the other platforms, friends. All right, Psalm chapter 1 and 2 this morning, friends. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Uh, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Friends, as we are in our Bibles here. Uh, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day 
and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Or prosper, right? All right. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which, uh, or chafe, uh, with uh, which the wind driveth away. And therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of righteous, or of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. All right, so let's roll on over to Psalm chapter 2 here this morning. Why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers to counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed uh, saying, right? Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cloud or cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Uh, the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon, uh, as he says, the holy or my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. All right, give me a second. Let me get caught up on a couple of spots here. Not a lot, but uh, like I said, just uh, wanted to throw these two ver or chapters in here. Uh, amen. So, Psalm, right? The book of Psalm. Let's check that out. Chapter 2. And give me a second again. Let me go ahead and get caught up on this. Amen. All right, let's check it out. Verse 8, let's read it. Ask of me, and I shall give thee a heathen, uh, right, for thine inheritance and in the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. I serve the Lord, friends, with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry and ye perish from thy way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are they, all they that put their trust in him. Now we got to ask ourselves, friends, are we trusting in the Lord? Are we leaning on our own understanding? Uh, friends, I think that's a good, uh, a good question to ponder uh, as, you know, as we go about our days and our thoughts and kind of keep our thoughts captive there. Uh, amen. So let me uh, let me go back over here, as it says, as he looks at you know he said in in chapter three or verse twelve here, blessed, friends, blessed or blessed are all they that put their trust in Him. And again, we got to ask ourselves that: Are we trusting in the Lord? Are we leaning on our own understanding? I say to the latter. Don't lean on your own understanding, but trust in the Lord, my friends. He's got a good plan for us. Amen. All right. Let's see. Ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Where are we going? I don't know, but I know where I'm going. Do I? <laughs> oh, mercy, my friends. Hope you're doing well. How you doing? Uh, you're live on the air. I know. Thank you.
for your time. Thank you for your patience, understanding, and your prayers here. And, of course, your awesome support. Blessings. Uh, amen. I pr do appreciate y'all being here. Uh, amen. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I think I need me some more coffee, my friend. So let's take a quick coffee break. Uh, readjust ourselves. And... Keep rolling here. Good to see you. Got a little bit left for you. Not too much, but uh, got a little bit here. Amen. All right. So we got on the menu, hot off the press, live and in color. Uh, where we got Axe. Uh, and I was just looking at seven. Uh, Acts 7. Well, that figures. Let, let's shift over here a little bit here, friends. Acts uh, 7 and 8. And uh, I want to go ahead and cover that, uh, both those chapters here. So, let's do that. Amen. All right. And let's go ahead and roll that. I had uh, had gnats floating around in the studio again uh, as we've been bombarding and spraying uh, our studios here in the walls and stuff for the bathrooms. Uh, it's, you know, it's a typical everyday uh, battle kind of thing. So anyway, we're, we're working on, still working on all that stuff. So... Um, so, yeah, all of a sudden we had the kind of a, a thing and in, in, uh, gnats floating around the studios. And, uh, you know, so that's what that was. Uh, as I had one on the backside there. Anyway, got it off there. Got it taken care of. Anyway, let's read on. Y'all don't want to know about the gnats situation going on here, right? Amen. So I'm just kind of rolling through. Now, that's a lot of verses. Um, Marcy, that is a lot of verses here. I don't know if we want to read all that. Um, pretty, uh, a lot here. So let me, let me think about this for a second here. And let's see what we want to do. Uh, although it's very important scriptures for sure. Um. So, give me a second. Let me kind of go through things and see what we got going on here. And, amen, friends. Give me a minute. We are kind of trying to figure out if I want to go ahead and read all the way through this. Quite the set of scriptures here. Um, amen. All right. But up, up. Ba, ba, da, boom, ba, da, boom. Got a lot. Tell you, friends, it's a lot here. Give me a second. Let me try to figure this out here. Figure out what I want to do. Um, amen. Let me fix this. Um, and you guys know, you know, as the Bible's the uh, the pages are real thin, and that's what I'm kind of trying to clean up. I. You know, as the the papers are really really thin, uh, and so I'm just trying to fix all that up. Uh, but up, boom. And of course, I didn't get a chance to fix this up. But let's read it, friends. Let's go ahead and check this out. I uh, I know, and a lot of these scriptures are really long. Now this has sixty verses in it, chapter seven. Um, so let's go ahead and read that, friends. Let's spend a little bit of time uh, in the book of Acts again here, friends. You know, I always like to recap scriptures uh, for you. Because like I said, I never know when I'm going to get back on the air. Uh, pretty hectic, ambitious scheduling. Uh, and again, you guys know, seven days a week, it's every single day. Uh, and I'm glad because I, you know, I prayed for... Uh, I prayed for all this. I prayed for um, increase. And God definitely answered that prayer 
uh, and gave me an increase. You know, good or bad, I'm doing the best I can here. I uh, always like to give you guys a lot of scriptures, a lot of things to kind of study on your own time. Uh, amen. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> amen. Because, you know, friends, if you pray, he will hear you. God will hear you and he will answer your prayers. Blessed. Amen. Yahweh. All right, let's check it out, friends. Uh, again, just kind of checking my monitors here and checking my scriptures. Now, I hope you have your Bibles with you, friends. We're going to go into uh, Acts chapter 7 and 8. And I know Acts 7 has 60 verses, friends. Can you handle it, my friends, this morning? I hope you can. All right, chapter 7 in the book of Acts, friends. Let's read that together as I always like to bring you a pile of scriptures, a plethora of information from the Bible here, friends. Amen. Let's check it out. Let's scope it out. Let's snoop around a little bit in the word of Acts, friends, this morning. Chapter 7, then said the high priest, "Are are these things so? Uh, And he said, men, brethren, and fathers, hearken, the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before uh, he dwelt in Sharon, and said unto him, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall shew you. Ah, then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Sharon. And from hence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein ye now dwell. And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not as much as uh, to set his foot on. And yet he promised when he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed after him, uh, when as yet he had no child. And God spake on this wise that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, he tells us. And they that should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil four hundred years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. Not after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. Uh, And so Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him the eighth. The eighth day, he says, he tells us here, the eighth day. And Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him, friends. And he delivered him out of all his afflictions, and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt in all his house. As he says, persevere to the end, my friends. All right. In verse 11, now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Canaan, and great affliction. And our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren. And Joseph's kindred uh, was made known unto Pharaoh. They sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him. And all his kindred, uh, threescore and fifteen souls. 
So Jacob went down into Egypt and died, and he and our fathers, or he and our fathers, and were carried uh, over into Sirchem. Right? There it is. Uh, and laid in the sepulcher that Abraham brought for a sum of money of the sons of Emor, the father of Sychem, or Sechem, right? Good morning, Franz. Good to see you this morning. As we are in Acts, uh, I believe, 7 and 8 here. Amen. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, when uh, or which God has sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. The same dealt subtly with our kindred, and evil and treated. Uh, let's see, and treated our fathers. So, as we look at this, friends, check it out. And there goes my bookmarks uh, again. Uh, in which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished, uh, let's see, nourished up in his father's house uh, three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him uh, for her own son, as we know that story there. Um, In verse 22, and Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and in deeds. Uh, And when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. All right. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian for he supposed his brethren would have understood how the God by his hand would deliver them. Uh, but they understood not. And the next day he shewed himself unto them as they strove and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren. Why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at the saying, and was a stranger of the land of Madian. Yeah, let me get this together here where he begat two sons. And when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him, uh, let's see, in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, uh, an angel of the Lord uh, in the flame of bush, or a fire in a bush. There it is. All right, when Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight. And he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord saying unto him, friends, he said in verse 32, uh, let me read that here, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. Amen. I have seen, uh, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard the groaning, and have come down to deliver them, and now come I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared in the bush, to him in the bush. 
and he brought them out. After that, he shewed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. Mercy. Now this is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me him shall ye hear. And this is he that was in the church in the wilderness, <coughs> with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. So it says here, of with uh, and with our fathers, who received the likely or lively uh, oracles to give unto us, to whom our fathers would not obey, but trust in him from them, and in their hearts turn back again unto Egypt, saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us. Uh, for as for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. Uh, as it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? And ye, or ye, uh, took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away before Babylon. Now, let's look at 44, friends. Now, our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers had came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drave out before the face of thy fathers under the days of David. All right, let's keep rolling here, friends. Good to, good to see you. Amen. And 46, who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him an house, howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophets. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? I uh, hath not my hand made all these things? Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have known or have been known now <laughs> the betrayers and murderers have received the law by the dispossession of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly uh, into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Amen, as we know. Uh, and said, Behold, I see the, heavy, the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then 
they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose, by the way, his name was Saul. You know the story there, friends. So, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, received my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice and lay not this sin to the charge or their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. All right, let's roll on over to chapter eight here, friends, in the book of Acts this morning. Bright and early as you're starting your Thursday morning off. You know, we got to be in, in the word here. Uh, all right, so let's roll on. Let's do chapter eight here. Friends, are you still with me? Are you still here? Amen, friends. Appreciate that. Uh, let's keep going. <laughs> chapter eight. Let's keep rolling with it, friends. Now, and Saul was consenting unto his death. And at this time, there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made him, or made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hauling men and women, committed them to prison, uh, therefore, they that were scattered abroad everywhere were preaching the word. Mercy. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto these things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying out with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame, were healed. Amen. And there was a great joy in that city, and there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed, as we are in verse 10, from the least to the greatest saying, this man is the great power of God. Now let's go on into uh, verse uh, 11 there. And to him they had regard, because that of a long time, he had bewitched them with sorceries. And verse 12. And when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs uh, which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent them Peter and John. And when they were come down, prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, or the Lord Jesus, as he says, but, you know. Amen. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw, through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, and he offered them money saying, Give me also this prayer, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, 
because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Ah, uh, thou hast neither part nor lot in this manner, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray God. Uh, let's see, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceived that thou art in the gall of bitterness. Uh, and pray God that perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Right? Is that where we were at? Or did I jump? Oh, yeah, I did. Well, let's, let's move forward to 23. Sorry about that. Uh, for I perceived that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon as we go into 24 and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. And they, when they have testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many uh, villages, as we know, villages of the Samaritans, friends. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go towards the south, under the way that goeth down from Jerusalem, unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, behold, a man of Ethiopia. Now, we know this story here. Uh, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. He read Esaias, the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him. Read the prophet Esaias and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Ah, the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, What did he say? We want to know, right? He said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh this or the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth, as we are in verse 35 here, friends. I uh, began the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came under a certain water. And the eunuch said, Ah, uh, he said, Here, see, here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe, church. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of Man, or Son of God, not the Son of Man. Tivo that. He's the Son of God. Amen. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, uh, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. But the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. And he says in verse 40, But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing uh, through he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea, right? 
Caesarea it is. Amen, friends. Boy, what a great what a great study that is, right? Uh, so much in there, so much to unpack, uh, right? You know, as uh, as we are looking at that, uh, there's there's something in that for us, uh, friends. So check it out, uh, right there. What is it? Uh, Acts. Eight or seven and eight. I wanted to kind of backtrack just a little bit uh, instead of just jumping into nine. I, although I know uh, seven, uh, you know, seven had sixty verses in there. I know that's a lot to read and and kind of uh, look at there. Amen. All right. Let's see. Make sure my mics don't fall off there. Um, all right, you guys are doing well. I appreciate your patience here. Um, like I said, I got a lot to do here, a lot to read here, uh, for you this morning because, like I said, I never know how much time uh, or when I'm getting on here again. Uh, so I want to go, let's see. I uh, hope you guys are doing good. I hope you guys are doing well. Amen. So we're going to kind of bounce around here just a little bit, friends. Uh, and I'll, I'll probably go back over this later on. But uh, can, can we take a quick look, friends, this morning? If you're still with me here, can we take a look at Revelation? Um, I want to go to Revelation 21 and 22, and and let's see this scripture again, uh, friends. Uh, kind of jumping over what I wanted to do here, um, but I I think this is really important that we touch basis with the book of, um, uh, you know, of uh, Revelation here. Um, and I almost want to kind of backtrack to 20. So let's, yeah, let's do that. Let's, uh, let's do that here. Um, um, cause let me, I want to do that here. I know that's a, that's a lot, but I, I really wanted to, you know, touch basis with this chapter here. So bear with me. Let me, uh, fix the spot here. All right. Um, amen. All right, friends. Can we can we look at the book of Revelation again? Can we backtrack just a little bit here and and take a look at it? Um, amen. We might end up even closing out, uh, friends, because we're already over the two hour mark. And I know I'm just kind of watching the clock here, but uh, can we go ahead and do that? Let me let me grab a little quick cup of coffee here, church, and uh, let me. Let me see. We might close out here. Amen. Just a little after one thirty here in the morning. You're still live on the air, live at Streamyard, friends. How awesome is that? Live with Streamyard. Uh, I'm still your host. I'm here, Pastor Rick. Here. Good to see you. Let's go to Revelation uh, and uh, chapter twenty, friends. Let's go ahead and check that out. If you're just joining uh, here in church this morning, uh, we are going into Revelation <clears throat> and about verse or chapter 20 to 22 here this morning, friends. All right. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent. Ah, uh, mercy, friends, we know that is the devil, uh, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now watch this. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. All right, and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. 
uh, and saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witnesses, church, the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark uh, upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. And this is, as we know, the first resurrection. All right, verse 6. Blessed or blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power that they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. I believe that is, uh, in my understanding, that's where we're at. Uh, Satan has been loosed. Uh, So it says in verse 7, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. We clearly see that, friends, every single day. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Now, again, referring back to Gog and Magog, which is again in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Uh, So let's look at that. To gather them together to battle and the number of whom is at the sand, or is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. And the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne. uh, And him that sat on it. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And they found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened again. Uh, friends, the two books, the Book of Life and the Lamb's Book of Life. So let's look at that. So in 12, friends, chapter or verse 12, uh, Revelation 20. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand there or stand before God. And the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the Book of Life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered uh, up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works, friends. And death and hell were cast in to the lake of fire. And this is the second death, friends. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. All right, let's go on to 21. Chapter 21, the book of Revelations here, brothers and sisters, this morning. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Uh, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of the heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God, friends. 
Now, here's the best part of this verse. Now, this ought to give you some peace, friends. This ought to just put it right there, right? This this always gets me, too. I have a hard time trying to get through this. Uh, this is uh, kind of one of the last uh, scriptures I, I said uh, to my mom uh, before she passed away. Um, and I showed her that. She, she went right to it and uh, found the Lord. So, you know, and, and basically, you know, as hard as all that is, um, she had solace and peace. Uh, so uh, one of the last conversations I had was with the scripture. Uh, and it was been some years ago, but um, what a what a great peaceful scripture this is, a verse this is. Uh, here, friends, and uh, again, this would give us uh, a lot of peace, eternal peace here. Um, so let's look at, uh, again, Revelation 21, at about verse 4 here, friends, this morning. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. How awesome is that, right? Uh, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Man, and he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. All right, uh, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and adulterers and all liars shall have their part. Uh, in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, uh, which is the second death. Now, real quick, friends, if you happen to have a Discord, check it out. I am on Discord. Uh, and let's check that out. I wanted to make sure you guys knew that I am on the Discord platform. Uh, amen. And so, like I said, I got the tablet over here now until I get my new frame there. Um, all right. So there it is. Uh, podcast live nine on the server there. Uh, podcast uh, host right there. And that is uh, right there. Amen. Um, amen. All right. It's got to go through a couple little things here. All right, and let's see. Uh, da, da, da. All right, so good there. I think we're okay as I'm just kind of monitoring the uh, uh-huh, the channel there. There it is on the Twitter account and, of course, uh, on all the social media. So I'm just checking channels here, uh, friends. just want to make sure everything was loaded in and good. Let's go ahead and go to our Twitch channel. Now, I'm going to have this over here. This actually, my tablet's going to be up here where I can actually get to it and see it better. Uh, kind of right up here. Uh, so, bear with me. We're just kind of checking channels to make sure everything's going good. Um, amen. Oh, wow. Thank you. Got a new follower on our Twitch channel. That's awesome. Thank you guys for that. I do appreciate that. You guys jumping on the channels. Pastor Rick, World Wildlife Ministry Podcast Network, blasting the devil with the word of God, friends. Now, we're, listen, we're just in Revelation. Uh, we got 21 here, and uh, we are at about verse 5 or 6 here. So if we look at 5, friends, he says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Uh, and he said unto me, write, for these words are true and faithful. Amen. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega. Uh, what else is he saying here? Now the beginning and the end, I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water 
or of water of life freely, amen, by his grace, amen. Now he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is, as we have seen, is the second death, friends. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will shew thee the bride, uh, as it says, the lamb's wife. Now again, thank you guys for jumping on Discord. Thanks for jumping on uh, on the Twitch channel. Uh, what is it uh, there? We've got Ministry Podcast Live uh, right at um, <laughs> right at Twitch, uh, friends. So let's continue. Let's keep rolling here. Um, and let's see. Uh, let's see. In verse nine, and there came unto me one of the seven angels which uh, had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talk with me, saying, Come hither, I will shew thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away into the spirit to a great and high mountain and shewed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her light uh, let's see. And his light was likened to a stone most uh, great, or let's see, precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And it had a wall great and high, and twelve gates, and the gates twelve angels, and the names written therein, which are the names of, of course, as we know, the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this because it is uh, quite repetitive a little bit here uh, as it talks about the gates here. So, east, north, south, and west, all those gates had three, uh, well, uh, that those locations had three gates. All right. So, and the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names uh, of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with a reed. Uh, now, 12,000 furlongs, the length and the breadth that the height of it are equal, as we know. All right, and he measured the wall thereof, and, and as we are in Revelation here this morning, uh, in verse, uh, or chapter 21, verse, or yeah, verse, chapter 21 and verse 17. And he measured the wall thereof, and hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper. Now, just look at the description here, friends. How awesome, right? <clears throat> and the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. Now, we're going to go through the foundations here, friends. Pretty amazing. Um, ba -ba -ba -dum, ba -ba -dum. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a caldoni, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolites, the eighth barrel, the ninth topaz, the tenth a chrysoprus, 
chrysoprasus. We got to sound it out, friends. You got to sound out them big words. <laughs> Amen. And the 11th, adjacent, and the 12th, an amethyst. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gates was of one pearl. I believe that's what that said. Uh, amen. Yes, it did. It, it did. I, I rechecked it myself. And as we continue on in here, uh, the street of the city was pure gold, and it was a trans, as if it were a, a transparent glass. Uh, and I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is of the light thereof, or is the light thereof. And the nations of them, uh, which are saved, shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor uh, into it. In verse 25, And the gates of it shall not be shut up at all by day, and there shall be no night in there, or night there. And they shall bring the glory uh, up, 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 and the honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth uh, whosoever, or let's see, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a, a lie, right? Um, amen. Now, let's continue. But they, friends, as he tells us here, they that are written, or which are written in the Lamb's book of life. As I was saying, there's two books of life there. All right, let's go on over to 22 here, friends. And he shewed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God into the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded their fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and need no candle, uh, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever, friends. Mercy, that's good stuff. All right, and he said unto me, These things are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to shew unto his servants the things which short, or must shortly be done. And he says <clears throat> in verse 7, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which shewed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren and prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. 
and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Uh, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and thy reward uh, is with me to give every man according as his work uh, shall be. And he tells us here, friends, here it is. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do uh, his commandments. Uh, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter into the gates into the city and without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto these things to the churches. I am the root, he says, and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come, and let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst, church, come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Amen. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man, now watch this, friends. A lot of people are doing this. Uh, taking stuff out, adding stuff to it. Well, watch what the Bible tells us here, friends. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book of the prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Uh, he which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Uh, even so come, uh, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Church, amen and amen. Whew. Pretty powerful there, I'd say. Uh, pretty clear about taking stuff and adding stuff uh, as we see clearly in these end times, friends. Uh, as he tells us, hey, you know, don't be doing that, right? All right. Well, that, I believe that's a wrap. Um, amen. So let's see. And I'll have to go ahead and rearrange this uh, for the next podcast. Still got a little bit left in there, but I think you guys are going to be good, right? Let me look at the time here. Ah, uh, mercy, almost a three-hour podcast. I knew it was going to be close. I, I knew because, like I said, I never know uh, when I'm going to get on here. I never know what uh, when I'm going to get an opportunity uh, to get back on. So. With that, I'm out of here, you guys. Take care. I always appreciate you. Uh, I think I, I gave you a good Bible study there, even for myself. I always like to read. Uh, you know, I always like to uh, go back on this stuff and listen to them. So uh, I never know. Like I said, I wanted to make sure I left you guys a lot of good studies, a lot of good book, a lot of good word. So let's close out our channel. I appreciate you guys. Till the next time. Block Talk Radio, give me a second, you guys. Hold that thought. Let me get that out of there. And uh, let's see. I lost my little spot there for uh, the, uh, let's see, for, um, let's see. What's going on with my channel? All right. Let me get that out of there. Go down here. And... Uh, all right, Block Talk Radio, that's it. Pastor Rick, World Wildlife Ministry Podcast Network, a little after 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, until next time, friends, take care. You guys on the other channel, hold that thought. We're going to close out here. Amen. All right. Um, let's see here. Actually doing pretty good. Not bad.
Amen and amen. Let's close out our Spreaker channel. Uh, friends, appreciate you guys there at Spreaker Channel 1. Amen, church. Amen. Hold that thought, you guys. Give me a minute. Let me close out these channels here. You guys know the drill. Multitask and multi-recording. All right, Spreaker Channel 1. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you. See you on the next broadcast. StreamYard, hold that thought. Give me just a minute here.